week on Sailing Ruby Rose, we recovered from our Bahamas to Bermuda passage with some well earned dark and stormies. We enjoyed a traditional gombe dance and we also got on with our very long list of chores to prepare ourselves and our boat for the next leg of our Atlantic crossing. So we've only been here for uh, two days and yet I think Nick and I are extremely taken with Bermuda so far and why wouldn't you be? It is just stunning. And not only that, but even more importantly, everyone is so incredibly friendly. It's just, I think it's actually the friendliest place that we've ever been to, which is really saying something. While we are in Bermuda, we were rafted on the town dock. This meant that we had to climb over two other boats in order to get ashore, but that was cool because it meant that we were a quick two minute walk away from the town square. This made everything super easy and convenient and allowed us to make the most of our short time in Bermuda. I've been trying my best for a while Trying to please everyone who's around me I've been putting on my fake smile Even though I'm wasting time I don't want to be trapped in a box Trying to be like the rest when I'm not I just wanna go my own way Gonna let the past burn down Cause honestly don't wanna be Stuck in boring conversations with you With you I'm gonna leave it all behind Find myself, I'm gonna start over new Yeah I'm on my way now Okay, so here we are at, um, Christ, where are we? Yeah, that's important. St. George's Dockyard? No. You've got the, you've got the oh, thing in, in, in the pot, you've just got the guide of where we Wait, went. hang on a second. No, this is National Museum. Tell me where we are. Oh, my head. Is that the cruise ship you can see in this one? Yeah. The Royal Naval Dockyard. The Royal Naval Dockyard. Of Bermuda. Of Bermuda. The Royal Naval... We are at the Royal Naval... Why don't Naval... you start again? You're making an absolute shit show of this. I'll do it. <laughs> Welcome to the Royal Naval Dockyard of Bermuda, featuring Teresa, who can't work out where she is, and me, who's just a <laughs> quit most of the time anyway. On with the tour. Indeed. Thank you, darling. So I'd like to point out the kind of juxtaposition from left to right of how life kind of it goes forward through the ages and realistically just screws stuff up so if you pan this way you'll see the beauty of the natural unspoiled reef yes yes yes, yes. moving yes. forward towards me i am stood on uh, a georgian battlement which is a fort a big naval battlement, which is beautiful but historically but also kind of imbued with the kind of history of naval defense warfare and kind of violence and then if you go that way there's the slab mountain of norwegian cruise ships which really but if you looked at all the configurations of how they fire cannonballs, they used to fire loads of different stuff. Like they'd fire grape, and they'd fire balls, and they'd fire chain. Right. What's a grape? Grape is like, it's, it clusters of small balls. Uh, okay. And then chain is either two balls with chain through the middle, um, or just a piece of chain. So when it flew out, the, the chain was for taking out boat masts. Yeah, okay. 
because it would fly unevenly. Yeah. But obviously the range, the, the cannonball, if you think about it, it's just got chain. Okay, the, the range is not going to be very high because of the way it flows. But those, uh, those, ca those, those projectiles mm. will go further. Yeah. And also, there's a thing called spiraling a barrel. Yeah. So the inside of a barrel, if you look at the inside of a rifle barrel, it's spiraled. It's all spiraled out, mm. and it puts spin on the projectile as it comes out of the barrel. Yeah. Which means that it's far more accurate. And that's what these cannons have. That will be spiralled. I'm not sure that those cannons are spiralled because they're, they used to fire balls. Yeah. There was no need to spiral it. Yeah. This is why Nick's so handy to have around. Just a wealth of random information. Biggest cause of pet weasel death in the <laughs> USA. Uh, I know this one. Being squished at the back of the couch by fat people. Yes. You've already, you've already used that one on me. The expression, the whole nine yards. P-51 Mustang had nine yards of ammunition inside its wings. The wings were nine yards long. Okay. So when you gave, when you say you give something a whole nine yards, it refers to how much ammunition. So if you if you, if you expend all your ammunition in Mustang, you're giving it a whole nine yards. Right. Oh, I tell you what I found the other day. The Lord of the Rings was based on Beowulf, the Norwegian, um, the Norse legend. Okay. And I found that out because Tolkien did a thesis on the translation of Beowulf in the 1920s. That was what he did at university. All right, well, I put that knowledge to good use, didn't he? Yeah. All right. Bermuda has a fascinating history. In the 15th and 16th centuries, the islands of Bermuda were well known to Portuguese and Spanish seafarers who crisscrossed the Atlantic on voyages of discovery. It was an important navigational marker for merchant vessels returning from the Caribbean to Europe. Ships would follow the Florida Strait until they started Bermuda, then they turned eastwards, taking advantage of the westerly winds to sweep them back to the Azores or Europe. It was kind of cool to think that we'd be sailing the exact same route the seafarers had followed for over 600 years. Bermuda was colonised by the British in 1609 following the shipwreck of the Sea Venture, a British ship that was bound for the colony of Jamestown, Virginia, but was caught in a hurricane and instead was wrecked on the Bermudan reefs. Everyone on board survived and lived on the island for 10 months while building the two new ships to continue their journey. When the day came at last to board the ships and continue their voyage to America, two men decided that they were so taken by the island that they were going to stay. I can understand the temptation, Bermuda is stunningly beautiful, but I can only imagine what it must have been like to have been alone on an island with one other person for company, possibly for the rest of your life. I can only hope the two men were on very friendly terms. By the way, how incredible is this mural? It depicts the history of Bermuda over the past 400 years and is a captivating work of art. later the British returned to Bermuda and from there established it as one of its colonies. Slavery was an integral part of local society for over 200 years until it was abolished by the British in 1834. Today Bermuda is an independent country with deep roots in British, African, Portuguese and Caribbean culture due to its history of colonisation, slavery and immigration. This rich history lends itself to a unique and fascinating country which is unlike anywhere else we've ever visited. It is the last day, the day before we set off. It's strange, I've done this crossing before. I've crossed the Atlantic before, and last time I was kind of like one step away from being catatonic with fear. Now I'm kind of like a bit, just looking forward to it. I think two things. Firstly, I have the experience of one crossing. I don't, it's only one crossing, but I know that it wasn't as terrifying as I thought it was gonna be. And secondly, when we set off last time, we were set off into fairly bad weather, so. The weather forecast for the first five days at least is for light, almost no winds, which is probably going to have to facilitate us motoring. But, you know, I'm just looking forward to it, really. I don't want to rush across the finish line. I just want to get there safely, happily. You know, we've got a good crew. We did a really good shakedown cruise as well. You know, we did 750 miles to get here from the Bahamas. So all the little niggles and tweaks we needed to make to the boat to kind of tie things down, make sure everything was stowed properly, all been addressed. So my whiteboard is almost wiped clear. I don't have any more chores to do. We have the skipper's briefing tonight, which will, you know, give us weather, you know, the weather and kind of like frequencies for the SSB and other bits and bobs and just wish us farewell. And then tomorrow and tonight we will check out, check ourselves out of customs. And then tomorrow about this time we will leave. So the provisioning's been done. I've got all my 
mature Waitrose cheddar that I found next door. So that's pretty cool because, you know, finding good cheese for me is a bonus. Um, so yeah, one last day in beautiful and stunning Bermuda. And then time to head to Europe, to head off to the Azores, the, uh, an island that I'm very, very much looking forward to seeing. You can see from there, there's five steps there, and the bays from Bermuda, sort of northeast, you need to catch those winds. There's Bermuda, we should say Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So, wherever you play, the further north basically you go, the more wind you'll find. If you go too far north, you won't be great. Basically, if you want more wind, go further north, but beware that you might find headwinds from the one small one that runs through. Stay further south, you can see in the north and south. So, if you want to spin your drinks, go north if you don't stay further So, it's our um, last our last evening in uh, Bermuda. We've had our skipper's briefing, um, which was very informative. It gives us kind of uh, the frequencies for the SSB. It gives us the oh, kind of uh, protocols for starting, start lines, finish lines, where we need to get to emergency contact numbers. And then, got back, quick shower. Now time to go and have a quick beer. And then we'll have a meal out somewhere nice. All right, cheers. cheers. Tell us, our last meal on land for a few weeks. For two weeks, hopefully. And uh, yeah, we're leaving tomorrow morning at about 11 o'clock. Probably cast off about 10. We start line at 11. And then uh, at sea for two weeks. Good. Looking forward to it? Yes, I am actually. Yes. Nick, what are you having? Do you have Corona? We do. I'd love a Corona, please. No, I think we're ready to order. Okay, sure. I'm not. I haven't even looked at the menu. Oh, what have you been doing for us, Simon? Okay, good. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> bad news on the dance. Oh, no, please don't. This has got 15 verses. I haven't got flipping time. There's no time in my life to hear you singing that. <laughs> So this is the this is probably one of the most elaborate and delicious looking meals we've had in years. I've got um pines with yeah, oh, nice. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. salad. Next time on Sailing Ruby Rose, we're finally off on our 2,000 mile journey from Bermuda to the Azores. The weather is absolutely cracking and we get off to a fantastic start. If you don't want to miss that episode, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and Snapchat. All those links are down below and we hope to see you next week. Thanks again for watching.